Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Like and share. Share the message. Share the common sense. Share the truth. Share truth to power. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Now, I want us to start this morning from a very, very educational point of view. We will get into the ambulance issues again because I have a few questions. Questions that have hit my mind. And yesterday, when all of the conversation was coming together, and, and congratulations and thank you to Honorable Kwabena Minta Kando and, and the rest of the team who went to uh, all the way to Fijai to go and understand what the situation is. I hope that this becomes a turning point in the life of our emergency service provision in this country. Because we started this journey in 2004. We started this journey under President Kufo. President Kufo had envisioned after that long hiatus, because we used to have ambulances under Dr. Nkrumah and all of that. But after a long hiatus, President Kufo decided that, look, let me bring in a new fleet of ambulances. So President Kufo, thank you very much. May you live long. We are grateful for this legacy. Then in 2007, the same President Kufo decided to expand so between 2007 and 2008, the National Ambulance Service was expanded. We decided that we were going to expand. So this morning, the question we're asking is, is our emergency system really an emergency? Does it need emergency support? Does our emergency system need emergency support? We decided that we're expanding in 2007 through 2008. So we bought uh, what you call it, new ambulances and we decided to have the regional coordinators and all of that. We gave people letters for it. That is the National Ambulance Service. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Share it. Like it. Tell somebody that we are back. They say we can't sustain it. We will sustain it because we will talk about the relevant issues until they are solved. People cannot die because they went to hospital to assess health care. People cannot die because they went to hospital to assess health care. Now, we decided to expand. And what that expansion meant was that we're going to create jobs for people. We're going to hire more people. We're going to get more logistics and all of that. We're going to make some investment. That's a good thing. Capital investment, if you like, call it so. Now, after we did the expansion, what did we do? Subsequent governments, President Mills brought in some President Mahama brought in some, and now recently President Akufado, 307 ambulances. So there is that systemic contribution to the fleet of what we have within the ambulance, the, the emergency sector. We all know. So we are expanding. The, the wisdom even in this latest addition is that we're saying that, okay, let's give every district an ambulance so that it's connected. We are a population of a little over 30 million, correct? Check what the UN standard says. How many people to one ambulance? We have broken all those things. How many people to one police? How many people to one doctor? How many people to one lawyer? How many people to one critical care nurse? How many? So we, we're woefully inadequate in most of these cases. And the ambulance service is no different from that. But you see, where we try to create a certain kind of um, animal farm situation where services that are supposed to be free are now being paid for because we are not running a cash and carry system. I remember that we abolished that, the cash and carry system, where you get into to a hospital and if you don't have money, nobody wants to take care of you. We abolished that because we were losing people. Maternal mortality and all those things were becoming a big issue. So we decided that we were going to make capital investment within that space. We bought ambulances. Subsequent, subsequent governments brought some more. We expanded. We got coordinators and all of that. 
Now we are being told, and, I, and maybe I'd like to refresh your memory, that he played a video of the bereaved husband of that young lady who died in the, in the central region because that's where she died. She was coming from Fiji, and then she came from Fiji in the western region, but she died in the central region. Those are the facts. Play the video for me of the man. Man said that they are, they, they are to drive back to Fijai Hospital. Said, oh, senior, young co, now maybe I must say I will pay. An emotional John Obrey, your husband. If you are going to go to the hospital, no? you were at the entrance. You stood there. <laughs> you stood there, you stood there, you stood there, you stood there. They were going up and down. And so that man came to tell me that. Uh, why are you then Why are you Why are you there? 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 Why we were at the entrance. We stood there. <laughs> we stood there. We stood there. We stood there. We stood there. They were going up and down. And so that man came to tell me that. Uh, why are you then car? Over Buana? Why are you? But you know, Jim. Why are you going to be there? But you know, Jim. I by time the moon made it in there. Well, precise time. Now one brass man, I catch a dab in there. Uncle Chasing the eight thirty eight. Uncle Chasing the eight thirty eight, meaning it was at that time that my wife. <laughs> this is unfortunate, and I hope people get punished for this because this is cruel, it's crude, it's rude, very unprofessional, very unethical, and people should be punished for it. Because if they have been able to do it, it means that people have been doing it. Questions that are engaging my mind this morning. Holy Family is in Fijai. There's a Fian Kwanta government hospital in the western region. There's the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital. There's a hospital also at Winneba. So what services were they coming all the way from the western region that a Fian Kwanta and Cape Coast Teaching Hospital could not do because the woman actually died at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital when they had reported to their, their, their control center that the woman's situation was deteriorating. Are there no consulting physicians at the uh, Ifia Quanta? What facilities don't they have? It's a tertiary hospital. So why Kolibu? Who is their connection at Kolibu, which is why they wanted to come to Kolibu at all costs? Because who were they coming to? And if indeed the patient was in a critical condition, and there was, was there, for example, a medical officer on board the ambulance? Was there a medical officer? Was there a critical care nurse aboard the ambulance? What is the standard operating procedure? Now, what is the travel time between Western region and the greater Accra region? Could the patient have made it? Obviously, no. I mean, you're, you're bringing somebody who is in a critical condition from Fiji. After you have wasted all the time to tell the person to pay for fuel and out of desperation and frustration, and we know that the person is anxious, the person says, I will pay. We came all the way, all the way from Fijai. We're coming to Kolibu. We are coming to Kolibu. Who was called at Kolibu? And what kind of conversation had happened? Did they keep, for example, the regional coordinator, Dr. Siame, in the loop? As is the standard procedure, did the Holy Family call the National Ambulance Service? If we, if we advise the fish, we advise the cat as well. Or are they just trying to save themselves? Because it, the doctors, I've spoken to doctors, it's obvious that the, the patient couldn't have survived from Fiji all the way to Kolibu. They couldn't have survived. So were they doing it? 
to just try and put the blame on the National Ambulance Service because they also have a lacuna? I'm asking, was the regional coordinator aware of the situation? Was he kept in the loop? Why was, for example, the Air Vice Marshal not called to support what we call med evac, medical evacuation, which could have taken about 30 minutes or so? We saw that in the case of Mr. George Anda. He was Deputy Communications Minister. We had that terrible accident. Hold on. Put that, put that uh, uh, screenshot for me. We saw the med evac situation in Mr. George Anda's case. We saw it. And helicopter moved there and moved him to 37. We saw it. Oliver, pull that up for me quickly. We saw the, we saw the situation. Unfortunate as it is, I am tempted to and pushed to act this morning. Do our systems work? Is there systemic failure? Dr. Siame says no. But I want to ask this question. This was done for another fine Ghanaian. Forget about the fact that he was an MP and a deputy minister at the time. Forget about it. I don't want to do that equation. But I'm saying that if we clearly wanted to bring the woman from Fijai all the way to Kolibu, and we know what the distance is, what's the distance between uh, Western region to even Central region, and from Central region to a greater crowd, at least five, six, seven hours. Even if they are top speed, maybe five hours. Now, this person is in a critical condition, and you know what a pothole and ramp situation is. So why couldn't we call the Air Force to do a uh, medical evac like we did for Mr. George Anda? Mr. George Anda was involved in an accident, airlifted to 37 Hospital, November 3, 2018. We are all taxpayers, by the way. So we have turned the whole situation into a cash and carry situation. Can we not make this unfortunate cash and carry situation, you know, a, a norm? Can we not make it a norm? Can we, for example, not decide that this should be part of a full package? So I go into a hospital. Now, on my sick bed, the doctors come to me and tell me that they have to refer me and that the referral will have to be fueled by me. It doesn't make any sense at all. No civilized country in this world will do that. So if we say we are a civilized country or we are getting towards civilization, some of this bush attitude we must stop. It is bush. That I am sick. And give a scenario. Just say I am the only one. I live alone. I am sick. I have no relatives. I'm an immigrant in, the, in your country. I walk into the hospital. My situation gets worse. I'm on a hospital bed. Then you come to me and tell me that because you are going to travel a long distance, I should give you money for fuel. It doesn't make sense. I know that the ambulance service has constraints. And some people have chosen to use the failings of the system and the vulnerability and desperation of the patient to extort money from them. I know they have issues. I know. I know they have issues. I know, for example, that they are giving fuel coupons to be able to run around, uh, you know, their, their own districts and all of that. Even so, the question I ask is this. Now we have mapped ambulances to districts. Even so, we have mapped ambulances to districts. What is the level of influence the district has in the management of the ambulances? So it could be running in Okanekwe, or it could be running in uh, Ahanta West, or whichever constituency it is. If he has to travel outside, what is their standard operation procedure? I've been made to understand that, for example, because they were coming from Takrade or Fijai, they had to travel maybe from uh, Fijai all the way to the central region. Then another team takes over from them, so that the guys from Fijai can go back. Then they, they move from central region all the way perhaps maybe to Winneba and then from there to Accra. So it's more like a baton kind of thing. Somebody takes over at some point and brings them. Is that what was going to happen? Because they charged 600 Ghana cities and they said that 600 Ghana cities was because of the distance. So they have seen that the system has a flaw and they are taking advantage of it. Now, if we started this in 2004, perfected it in 2008, and I've even expanded some more after that, 2012, 2016, 2020, we have expanded all of that. Why should we still be talking about a basic thing like fuel? When we know that people get free fuel coupons to turn on their ACs in their V8 and they leave it and they attend TV and radio programs, they go for funerals, the engines are on till forever. Why? And ambulances cannot find fuel. Why? 
And then the excuse is that, oh, because you are traveling a longer distance, so you have to support with fuel. Hogwash. Now, is it true that some hospitals now charge you a certain sum of money, literally? So, because they know that, oh, the ambulance service will come and say, oh, uh, a certain amount of money is, is needed to support with fuel. Then they come and say, oh, let's say 600 Ghana. They know that ambulance service is just 600 Ghana. So, they say, oh, give us 1,000 too. Then they halve it. Give half to the ambulance service, and then they pocket the half. Is it true? And these are people within the service who are feeding me with this information that this is what is happening because people have seen that there is a certain, a certain flaw in the system. They demand for it. Why do we do this to ourselves? I want to see an audit done in this matter. I want to see heads roll. I want to see an audit done in this matter. I want to see an audit, Mr. President. It can happen to any one of us. You sit there and defend nonsense. Sit there and defend nonsense. It can happen to any one of us. Nana Dodan Kwe Kufado brought us 307 more ambulances, at least, for every district. That's why I'm asking, how deeply involved is the district in, ma in the management of those ambulance services? How deeply involved are they? Is it not the standard procedure that nobody must spend more than 24 hours within the emergency system? So we're moving the person from Fijai to Kolibu. Already the person has stayed in that emergency system. Now, we were told that they had an elective surgery. Simply what I've been told and what has been explained to me is that elective surgery is where you go to the hospital today. Doctor sees you and gives you a date. Say, come on Wednesday, come and sleep over. So Thursday morning, I will operate on you. So obviously the hospital will have details of this patient. We need to take a second look at our emergency system. You remember when Professor Mills died, bless his soul. President of the Republic, he died. Well, people said they were put in a bucket of a, 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 you know, a pickup vehicle and all of that. All those things were said. You remember when Mr. P.V. Obin died? Bless his soul. He died. Spring Jacks Road. Was there an ambulance? There was a taxi. We spoke about it. Remember when Vice President Demi Sata died? We screamed small and then we stopped. We need to open our eyes and fix it. They all belong to the political class anyway. And I showed you another person who belongs to the political class who was lifted. A, 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 a medical evac. So why does the ambulance service get free fuel coupons? And still insist that we must pay. I want to understand that thing. Mr. Minister for Health, good morning to you. I want to understand. I want, I want to understand because if we started this journey in 2004 and we are still talking about basic things like that, it's a problem. It is a big problem. Now, this is the explanation that Dr. Siame, Dr. Teria Siame, he's the coordinator for the Western and the uh, Western North regions. He gave me this explanation yesterday because I asked, I want to understand why, why, why we have to pay for money. Why we have to pay money to, to support fuel. When you are vulnerable and sick in a cash, uh, uh, no, uh, no, uh, not a cash and carry system. I want to understand. Play that video for me. Uh, now, Doc, again, about the fuel, I'm, I'm, I want a bit of clarity. I know that the mm. ambulance services are supposed to be free. Is that correct? Yes, it's free. Great. Now, if the ambulance services are supposed to be free, how then do you come in with a conversation of uh, the hospital or a clinic or a patient supporting with a bit of fuel? I, I'm trying to understand yeah, so where that comes very from. Simple. Mm. It's very simple. It's very simple. Be free when we go to the scene, we sell them out, we take mm. them to the hospital, and everything is free. Now, when the hospital calls us mm. and we want to take a patient to Tamale, mm. we want the patient to be sent to Tamale, and we have challenges with our fuel, but that's some distance. We tell the hospital, please, well, we think that we can help, but then the distance said that the fuel situation will be a challenge. Can you support? What are the hospitals have ambulances? Doc, doc what difference? What, sorry, to those sorry, doc. What difference does it make if, for example, perish the thought, somebody gets an accident at Labadi, and another mm -hmm. person is also being transferred from now defunct La General Hospital? What difference does it make? Are they both not Ghanaians? Oh, you are not getting me. I'm saying that it's all free, but where we have to go long distances and we have to tell them is a full situation. We talk to the hospital, and if they agree, then there's no issue. 
if, the, if, if, the, if the hospital does not agree or if the patient cannot fund this residual fuel you're talking about, what, what happens? If the patient cannot agree, then what you do is you send the patient to the nearest facility that could take care and that your fuel can support you to that place. Even if that facility... They want the patient to go to a particular place, mm. which is very far. Mm. That's why we have these challenges. But, 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 Doc, you also do know, sorry about that, but you also do know that the, the referral hospitals are in, are in stages and, and, and in categories. So, for example, you can't take me from a small clinic to another clinic because that is what your fuel can support. Once you pick me from a clinic, you know you're taking me to a poly clinic, you're taking me to a regional hospital, and that sort of thing. So this yeah, argument... So, so it's very simple. Mm. Um, maybe you are not aware, but uh, I'm a trauma um, surgeon as well. Okay. And I, I train in Hamburg, Germany. Right. right. And uh, I've, I have the training in also in Haifa, uh, Rambam, which is a, the, one of the highest hospitals in Israel. Mm. So this is our situation. We have fewer coupons for everything. When we're going for political rally, we have fewer coupons. We have fewer coupons for our friends and family. We have fewer coupons for all manner of unnecessary things. But to save people's lives, the people who pay the taxes, which are used to procure the fuel and to print the coupons, they have to pay for it. And we say our eyes have opened as a country. We are more than 60 years. If we were human beings, we would have been on retirement by now, playing with our grandchildren. This is our situation. This morning, even, even as we speak this morning, somebody will be forced to pay money before an ambulance moves. And sometimes, some of the ambulance guys, they walk off. But I'm saying that the ambulance service will take some of the blame because there's a systemic problem. But the hospital at Fijai, the clinic at Fijai, Holy Family, they also have questions to answer. The doctor who was referring the person, did they speak to a, a, consult, a consulting holy child at Fijai? Did they speak to a certain consultant at Kolibu? I want to know what kind of calls happened. And I, the audit will expose all of those ones. And whoever is responsible must be brought to book. That's my first issue for this morning, quickly. Now, yesterday I saw something on the... The Twitter page of the Ghana Library Authority. Pull that up for me. It's a Twitter page, Ghana Library Authority. You know that we have had a year of roads, the second year of roads. Now we are in another year of roads, right? The Library Authority, I understand, are having a, a retreat and they say the 2022 is a year of books. Pull that up for me. Okay, so project it. Don't put it behind me. Project it. I want people to read it. The Ghana Library Authority, as part of repositioning libraries as community anchors for transformation, declared 2022 as the year of books. In pursuance of this, the authority organized a planning retreat for regional library directors and heads of department to adopt. Beautiful initiative. You know, I chased the library at Okankwe South for 10 years of a media career. 10. 10 years from Pravda Radio to Viasat to TV Africa to 3FM TV3. 10 years of my life. I changed that library. And I chased it until I got it opened. Honorable Dakwan Numia will tell you. Honorable Abed Atta will tell you. Honorable Nana Kumia will tell you. Ten years of my life. I dedicated it, no matter the media house I worked with. And that is the kind of consistency that we must all have as people if we want things to change. Ten years of my life. Today that library is open. It's beautiful. Everybody goes there. The children are happy. But it took ten years. Maybe more, because I followed through from when the land was given to when the plan was adopted to when the building started and all of that. Started by Nana Kumia, Amedata came, added one more structure to it and all of that. It was left, it became a haven for weed smokers and all manner of people. The police came in. Ten years of my life, I chased it. Today, the library is opened. And I'm happy about this because when we were young, we used to go to the Accra Library to go and read. But there was a library also. At Kaneshi, I sent you the video, Oliver. Play that video for me. And yesterday, somebody sent it to me. It knocked me. Library at Kaneshi. This is what it has become. It's a library building at Kaneshi. Well, at some point, you have to pause. Pause. C come back. P come back. That's, that's one of the entrances. So there are two gates. A library. This is a property of the Ghana Library Authority. 
This is a property of the Ghana Library Authority. Play the video. At some point, when you get to the gate, there you pause. There's one gate here. There's another gate before that. This is a facility. It's, it's just a wall with a Kanishi police station. So this is it. Somebody has come to put a container in front of it. The gate is behind that container. The gate is behind that container. So when we say we are declaring a year of books, it's good. I agree. People must read. A nation that reads, it leads. When you read, you can lead. I like to read. I love to read. If you don't read, you can't do this work. But can we, for example, focus on the libraries that we already have? Take me back to Ghana at 60. Take me back. Show me the logo of Ghana at 60. Mobilizing for Ghana's future. It was under this government. This was the logo. Beautiful logo. Ghana at 60. Or Ghana 60 years on. Mobilizing for Ghana's future. I hope you remember this logo. You remember the logo and all the issues that came along with it. We are happy. Charlie Ghana is 60. You know, we are firing and all of that. Ghana 60 years on. Mobilizing for Ghana's future. This was our logo. Now, what was the promise when we celebrated Ghana 60 years on? We said we were going to build libraries across the country. Pull the story up for me. We said we we're going to build libraries across the country. It was a promise. And we even said that we're not going to spend governmental money. We're going to raise funds. You remember? Now, this is the story. Ghana 60 Library Project report submitted to planning committee. Monday, 4 December 2017. Is a report on the Ghana Library project is ready and has been submitted to the Ghana 60 committee. The feasibility study report covers all the proposed sites for the library project in the 10 regions of Ghana, 40 remote communities. Now we are 16 regions, but the location is still there. Now it says West Blue Consulting, as part of its 2017 corporate social responsibility, undertook to build 60 libraries in deprived areas across the 10 regions of Ghana in collaboration with the government of Ghana. In view of this, a committee with representatives from the presidency, the Ghana 60 Years On Secretariat, Ministry of Education, Mm. The Ghana Library Authority and selected construction firm in West Blue Consulting was set up. This is it. Now, the committee was to ensure the success of the project from concept to conclusion. 2017, concept to conclusion. The Ghana 60 Library Project was subsequently launched. The feasibility study site selection commenced with a team comprising blah, 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 all of those ones. So we, were, we said we were ready to launch into it. We're ready to launch into it 60 years on. That was our plan, that we get the nation reading. We have libraries. We have six at least in every, uh, every region, six. So six times 10, that's 60. Where are the libraries? Libraries in Ewahim. The libraries we promised the people that it were going to be the legacy of the 60th anniversary. Where are the libraries? We have now declared a year of books. We declared a year of roads. We have now declared a year of books. Where is the library? And somebody asked, does it make sense? I, I disagreed with this because I said libraries are good. They make sense. They make sense. But then a person raises germane issues. For example, show us the video again from Kaneshi. Kaneshi is central. Anybody who grew up back then knew that this place was a library. People, children in Kaneshi could go there to go and read. Pause. Let's see, the, let's see the entrance so that people know that this, it exists. This is a facility of the Ghana Library Authority. It still belongs to them. I believe they have not sold it. If they have sold it, possibly they sold it to some big mouth, some politician, or somebody who is connected to power. Maybe not in this administration, not the previous one. It could be anybody at all. We know what they do. They buy the, the things for themselves. Then they tell us the thing is not functional. We want to privatize them after some time. They sell it. We know. We know all of them. So now we have declared a year of books. But this is a classic. Show that, show that again. Show, show the library. Don't show my face. Show the library. I'm not a book. Now, this is a library. We have let this library to rot. We have left this particular library to rot. Like we have done in many other places in this country. So now we have declared a year of books. Hoping that it will catch fire. It's good. But where will the children be reading from? In any case, we have declared a year of books, but the children have gone back to school without textbooks. Textbooks, they're not books, Anna.
next book is a year books. We have declared a year of books, but the children are going back to school without books, without textbooks. So it is a good initiative, like what was done in 2017, Ghana 60 years on, mobilizing for Ghana's future. And we're going to set up 60 libraries across the country. It was heralded. We clapped for it. They said some were going to be mobile libraries, some were going to be container libraries, some were going to be uh, uh, concrete libraries, or if like cement block libraries. We said it. 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Where are the libraries? Ghana Library Authority. Where are the libraries? Have you paused to even ask where the libraries are? Ghana 60 years on, where is the account? Where is the account of the libraries? Because if you say somebody was, was going to sponsor it, we had done feasibility studies, we had formed the committee and all of that. Where are the libraries? Have you checked where the children will be reading the books from before we, you launch the year of, year, year of books or you, you declare the year of books? Good initiative, no doubt. Where are the libraries? Where would they be reading from? That's the question I'm asking you this morning. We say that children should read. I agree. I used to read as a child. I still read. But I'm asking this morning, where are the libraries? The libraries that we promised the people Ghana 60 years old. Show the Ghana 60 logo again. Let's close. Ghana 60 years on, we showed, the, we showed the people, we did a beautiful logo. We even put one at the uh, uh, Flagstaff House Interchange here. We put them at the crossroads here. This is the logo. Ghana 60 years on, mobilizing for Ghana's future. We are in the future. The future included a library or 60 libraries across the country. Question I'm asking this morning. I've asked two questions. An emergency system and I'm asking a second question. Where are the libraries? That's all I'm asking. It's good to declare year of books. Declare it. But let's go back to... Ghana 60 years on and do the audit. How many libraries did you build? Did you get all the money? Did you not get all the money? Where did the money go? Did the consultants decide to pull out? Did the sponsors decide to pull out? Or what happened? Did you not get the land like we're being told in the matter of the agenda? Why, 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 that we had problems in the land? Come and explain to Ghanaians before you go on to launch another thing. Who per launch and cry too much? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Good morning.